Have you ever wondered how to teach a lower head position for a lengthened spine and stride? Or how that head position should change when you're asking for more collection? Or maybe you're looking for a force-free way to teach your horse to flex at the pole or come onto the bit. Or maybe you're looking for the steps to take your horse from something like this to moving a bit more like this. Well grab a cuppa because in this video I'll teach you how head position affects the movement of your whole horse and how you can teach it without force or gadgets. Hi it's Hannah here and in this video I'm going to give you an introduction to how head position, the head position of the horse influences the balance and the movement of the whole of the horse. And you can see some photos here, these are my horse freckles and so what I'm going to be predominantly looking at in this this video is the difference between a longer, uh, lower head position and a higher, shorter um, head position to help the shorter, higher movement of the whole horse. So in the horse world there are lots of often conflicting uh, information and ideas about what we should be looking for in terms of head position in the horse and I spent a lot of years um, trying to find something that really made sense to me. And a few years ago, I came across the work of Philippe Carl, who is a French classical trainer. And when I saw him teach, I just was like, yes, this makes sense. It makes sense for all horses and all movements. And I think his work's really great, so go take a look at it. And it's really, really influenced me. But of course, um, this is connection training. So you'll see in this video, as we're teaching these things, a lot of the use of, of, the use of targets, bridges and rewards and it's really important to me that the horse is a really keen, willing and active partner all the way through. So the training is soft and light at all stages and um, that the horse is really present and understanding what we're asking for and that they're really taking ownership and responsibility of this movement which is just an amazing feeling when you don't have to kind of manoeuvre or um, contort your horse into position that they just come up and offer it of their own volition and, and that's really what I'm looking for because it, it's just a real partnership and it's a fantastic feeling. Okay, so what am I looking for exactly? Now, let's just have a look at a video clip of freckles. So this would be a longer, lower movement. This, to me, is the real basics that every horse should learn. Horses are not designed to carry weight on their backs, and in order to be able to carry a rider healthily and happily and soundly, we need to teach them how to move in a way which um, supports their backs and allows their backs to stay nice, that big healthy straight back. They shouldn't get dippy backs from being ridden. Um, so healthy, supple, straight, strong backs. And the real key to that is engagement. So what I mean by that is that the horse is using the abdominal muscles and their core to support the back and that they're uh, moving in, as you can see here with this really lengthened spine, um, a really nice um, core, active core and nice long strides. So even if you're just hacking out, or going on the trail, that's all you want to do with your horse, some of these exercises are really important because um, they'll keep him sound and healthy for a long time. When we're looking at some other things, we're going to look at three basic head positions. So we've looked at the kind of longer, lower one. Um, and then we're going to teach head up. Now, this is one that often feels counterintuitive because people are telling you to get your horse's head down all the time, but it's part of helping your horse shift the weight back onto the hind legs. As they lift the head, that leads to a lightening of the shoulders and the weight shifting back. Um, so it's not a tensing and a hollowing and a contracting that we're looking for. It's, a, it's an up and back kind of movement. And the head up is so key, especially, well, for, you'll see it for all horses, but especially for horses who tend to um, fall on the shoulders, are heavy on the bit, horses who stumble, horses who rush that are going, going downhill, horses who buck, all of these, um, the head up is really, often a really key piece in, in helping it. Um, and the third head position is vertical flexion of the pole. Now you'll notice I get there last, so this isn't... Um, this is a more advanced movement that you kind of have to prepare your horse for in order for them to be doing it uh, properly and healthily and using the whole body and not just kind of tucking in, coming behind the vertical and... No, this comes later on, so... Um, but again, it's a really, really important piece. And when you combine this kind of lifted higher head position with the rounder vertical flexion of the pole, that's when you get... and um, you've got the engagement and everything as well, that's when you get this lovely collected movement that Freckles is showing here. Okay, so I know you're dying to know how to teach this stuff. 
and you're going to see um, a wide range of horses and ponies in this uh, video in bits, bitless bridles, head collars, it doesn't matter, the tack and the horse, all horses are capable of this stuff. And um, these, all of these videos clips are taken from our Riding with Connection course. So on that course you see all of these training sessions in full and loads more. So this is just a very quick overview of how we approach it. Okay, so here I'm going to show you how to teach a head down. Now, most horses you kind of start with this, but if you've got a horse who's on the shoulders, nose on the floor, obviously you want to start with training the head up first. But um, this clip shows Freckles, um, who you've just seen, but this is where he was quite a bit younger, and he's showing a very typical head high, short, unbalanced green trot. And to help him um, change that, I want to teach him to lower his head. So the first thing I do is work on the ground, getting him to touch a target. And you'll notice that I'm clicking as he drops his head. So the target's there to teach him what I want him to do, but the click says, yes, it's dropping the head. Super. Yes, good boy, Freckles. That was fab. Once he's got the idea, I can then put that onto a voice cue. Um, and I do that on the ground, we do it at halt, we do it in movement, and I do it on his back as well. And you can see here that he clearly knows the word down means to drop his head. Down. Good boy. Super. I can then start to play with that in movement. And this was his first ever go at doing this in, in trot. And you can see it takes him a little while, but he kind of manages to work out how to do the trot and the head down together. And of course the click's there to tell him exactly what's right. All right, and down, stretch, down, oh, not find it, down, there, good, down, yes, good boy. So you can start to see already the power of having a marker or a bridge signal like the click that can pinpoint that exact moment. And you can also see that because we're using reward and Freckles is part of the learning process, that he's really kind of owning it and, and he's offering it himself. So this last clip was later in this same session, so the first time, and you can see he's already starting to maintain that position. So it can make really quick progress once they understand how to do it. Okay, so now we're going to look at how to teach the head up. Now this mare's got a really lovely long relaxed walk already but it's not very engaged and often to get the engagement it's the um, kind of combinations of lifting the head, lift, lightening the shoulders, shifting the weight and then asking them to go down and stretch. So you get this lovely stretch through the spine um, by kind of combining the movements and transitioning between the short and higher movement and the, the longer um, lower head position as well. So um, in order to get the engagement, often you need the two pieces. Again, that's explained in more detail in the course, but just as an idea on how you teach it. Um, and this is especially a great exercise for any horses who are heavy on the shoulders, who stumble, who rush going downhill, who are heavy in the hand, to help to teach them a different way of moving. So once again, we begin with the target, and we're just on the ground, and I've actually got the target, so I was filming as well, um, but again, um, Bracken's owner is putting the rope cue in, and as Bracken starts to lift her head towards the target, that's the point when we click. We're using the click to bring uh, the horse's attention to the movement that we want to see. So the target creates it, but the click says, yes, it's lifting your head. So once she's got the idea to lift the head from the rope, um, then we can start to play with it and um, starting to ask for that on the ground. So here you can see lovely long walk and stop um, and then at the halt asking for this lift. And so asking for it in different places at different times, making sure that the horse really understands it and that they're listening to the cue. You can see there that um, Bracken does a lovely weight shift back as well when um, Alison asks for the, the head lift which is exactly what we're after. <laughs> so then it's time to put it into movement um, and to start to combine the walk and the head raise. So this is very similar to what you've just seen with freckles with the head lower, and it's just about putting those two pieces together. So walking with the horse um, and then also asking for the head up and you should feel them slow and lift and lighten and that's the moment that you really want to click and reinforce. This next video is an excerpt from a live demo that I did at the um, Equine Clicker Conference and it shows um, a horse, Bobby, who 
The reason why we started to teach him head up was because he was actually um, bolting. When going downhill out riding, he'd start to speed up and get onto the shoulders and then he'd just take off. And this rebalancing work completely changed him. So this video shows a very similar process to the one you've just seen, but doing it on board. Targets, new touch. Good. So you can see there again, we've set it up so that he's walking with his head up. He starts to see the target and he expects, he's like, oh, I'm going to touch it. And he's starting already to lift his head up. Good boy. That's it. And walking around again. This all that's. <laughs> Have fun games pinging that, I think. <laughs> and then, so we did that a few times and then started to, as you approach the target, you're just going to lift your hands and vibrate them slightly, which is going to be your cue. Good boy, that's it. So then we started to put it in there so that he, again, he was associating the cue with the behavior. That's really good. Yes, You're very clever. Good stuff. And then walking around again. This is obviously a condensed version. We took a few sessions to, to work on this. Um, and then this time, you're going to do the same thing, but as soon as you start to feel his head come up before you get to the target, you're going to click him. Now, he might not stop, but that's up to him. If he walks to the target and touches it, that's fine. But you've still clicked that moment when he's responded to the, yes, good, that is. Good boy. So this video with this little cob beautifully shows the difference between the higher um, head position, the slower, lighter, more lifted walk, and the lower head position with the longer spine and the longer strides. So once you've got all that in place, now is the time to start looking at uh, vertical flexion and rounding of the pole. Again, every horse is different, so if I have got a horse who's really kind of stuck, then I might teach this a little bit earlier on, but generally this is the process that it'll follow. And we're looking again at this, the little cob that we've just seen, Huli. And once again, we are teaching it using the target. So this time we're just using a target under the chin to um, explain to them where we want the head. And once again, using the click to be used to have that precision pinpointing of when they start to, to flex. Good, that's it. And as with the head lift, it's always really important to be clicking when you really see the whole body. So you want that, that rock back, that engagement, the lift at the base of the neck as well. And once again, Huli shows this beautifully and you can see that he really understands the behavior. Um, and this was the next time I went to see them for a lesson. Yes, good. That was a real lift right through his neck as well. Good. And then when you're ready, ask for it in movement again. Yes, good, click that. Brilliant. So when he's offering it, because you're working on it, take it. Right. Oh, all right. So once he'd really got it and we'd made sure that it was on cue um, and all that, then we could start to work on it under saddle. Um, and these clips show uh, how he's got it at halt and then starting to ask for it in movement. Yes, good. <laughs> he's trying. Good. Uh, good, that's it, click that, brilliant. Okay, and the last horse I've got for you here is an ex-race horse, and um, she is learning exactly the same lessons that you've just seen the little cob, so you can see it works right across all shapes of horses and ponies. Um, now, if you've got a race horse who's very head high, obviously you want to work on head down first. Gertie was pretty good with the head down, but was very long, on the shoulders, um, kind of hollow back, not engaged. So we went through the same process. So the first thing was teaching her to lift her head. And you can see it's very, very slight at the beginning. Um, it's just little small changes. So what we'll do is just once or twice more on this rein, and you can try it, um, do it as you're going downhill again, and feel, especially as you're going downhill, that it helps her balance. There, good. That it's much, that's it, gorgeous. Can you feel that difference? Yeah, absolutely. The next step was then doing the asking for the, the vertical flexion of the pole and this was the first time she tried it in movement so you've just seen Huli trying it and this is Gertie's go and you can see again we're just taking those those 
uh, tiny tries at the beginning. Um, so we've taught it on the ground, they understand the reins, but then putting it into movement is a bit trickier. So really reinforcing those tiny little tries. And then this clip shows um, after some practice with Gertie how she really got it and you can see how her whole body has changed. So she's just really like, gathered herself up, come up and round and is just holding herself really, really beautifully. Thank you for watching my whirlwind tour of training head positions the connection training way. Head positions is just a small part of a much bigger picture so understanding things like how fast to progress how it fits in with going forward slowing down with the lateral movements nuances between different horses all of that stuff is um all in the riding with connection course so this has just been a little taster um, but hopefully it has helped you understand um, maybe kind of where to go with your horse or answer some questions on head position or how to train it or at least given you an idea of what it is that we do and how we approach it. So thank you again for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it.